Welcome to the Faith Broadcast. I'm Pastor Kerrick Butler. I lead Faith Christian Center here in Austell, Georgia. Pay attention to this message. I believe God is gonna say something to you that is gonna bless your life, change your life, and empower you and equip you to make Jesus famous in your everyday life. Listen up, and we'll talk to you at the end of today's broadcast. Everything can change instantaneously. Everything can change within the next year. Time is our friend. And if we see things from God's perspective, we will grow on purpose and we'll see, we'll see ourselves living life oh, the way that the Bible says that the Lord has designed for us to live it, where our days are full of just ex what the Bible describes as exceedingly abundantly above and beyond what we've asked, what we can dream of, what we've imagined. That's what God, in that's how God intends for us to live day and every day. Even though there are troubles and circumstances that we will have to fight daily, we fight the good fight of faith, and this is a daily, this is something we're going to have to do on the daily. It's not that we are without conflict or our lives are without conflict, but in despite the circumstances, or despite the conflict, or despite that doctor's report, despite what your job has said, despite what your bank account says right now, God's word trumps all of that. And when we do it his way, we'll see what it is that he said that we'll see, because God is not a man that he should lie. And his hands are not too short that he cannot bring these things to pass. He just needs us to fall in love, in line. So today, I am going to be talking to you all about growing on purpose, being intentional with your growth. We are to live miraculous lives, and we see and experience miracles all the time, especially here at Faith Christian Center. But are you growing on purpose? Today, when you woke up this morning, and sometimes it's easy to do on Sundays, but then sometimes we don't even do it on Sundays. Are you expect, what are you expecting? Where's your expectation? Are you expecting miracles? Are you expecting that family situation to work out? Are you expecting promotions and opportunities and clients? Are you expecting money to come? Are you expecting for your body to, to feel more energetic, to be more lively, full of life? Or are you expecting same old, same old? You know, you wake up next to your husband. Mm. Same old, same old. <laughs> I'm up before him. He's still sleeping. He make me no Mother Day breakfast or whatever, you know. Like, are you expecting things to be different or are you just prepping yourself for things to be exactly the same and trying not to blow up well God intends for us to do life and grow on purpose he intends for us to expect miracles expect change growth on purpose is so important because it is a prerequisite to whatever that next step is for you, it's a prerequis prerequisite for you, for you to go from glory to glory. Without growth in every area, you won't be prepared for the next step. Even if God took you to where you think you want to go or where you think you should be, you wouldn't even be able to stay there. Even if all of a sudden your spouse or your children, you know, guess, turned into the type of person that you think they should be, what type of person would you be? Would you even be able to accept that change, or would you be so mad that it took so long that you wouldn't even be able to love them the way that you should appreciate the miracle that has just happened? So growth is intentional. And it's a prerequisite for your life to continuously go from glory to glory. Now let's look in the word 
And let's talk about what type of heart you need to have in order to, to, to grow. And then we're going to talk about how to intentionally grow. So if you go to Mark chapter 4, we're going to start at verse number 3. You know, this is very important. It's very important that you be intentional with your time and intentional with your choices and intentional about growth. Chapter, Mark chapter 3, verse 4 says, actually, one moment. Mark chapter 4, verse 3. I'm not sure if that's what I said to you, but it's Mark chapter 4, verse 3. And it reads in the King James Version. Hearken, behold, there went a sower to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And, and, and we're talking about seeds here. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And others and other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth forth some 30 and some 60 and some 100. Growth is a prerequisite for you going from glory to glory. The time that it takes for you to grow will depend on the condition of your heart. But God will never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He is for you. He will not abandon you, and he'll make sure that your heart is good ground. Life can become so very busy that it's difficult to take a good look at ourselves to kind of to gauge where we are, to see what's really going on with us. But it's important for us to stop. It's important for us to renew our minds, like the Bible says. It's important for us to read the word. It's important for us to meditate on the word. It's important for us to say the word. It's important for us to really get it so we allow the word to do a work in our heart. Throughout the day, we are going to be bombarded with you. The, the, the group that is in this room, you guys are bombarded with some, some of everything. And Many times, without knowing, it's, it's, it's getting to you. And if you don't stop often, not just when it's evident, not just to you, but to everybody around you, like, boo, <laughs> what in the world? And it's okay if you're there. God can take you from that place. You can repent, and things can be come balanced again. But it's important that once we get back to a good place, that we grow on purpose, that we do these things intentionally, that we stop often, constantly, that we allow ourselves to see what's going on, and then allow God to, to fix it, to heal it, to change it, to change our minds, to show us the truth. It's important because we are being affected. Our hearts are being I guess changed or or scarred or damaged. And we need for our lives to remain in a state where we are like constantly good ground. We need to always be good ground so that these seeds 
that the Lord is planting have the opportunity to come to fruition. Instead of being robbed by birds or fowls and or dying because they had no time or opportunity to grow deep roots. So we have to be okay with us seeing things the way that they truly are. We have to actually make that time, and it's not going to be easy because there's no time already to begin with. But you know what I find? I find that whatever you do on the regular becomes easy to continue to do, and then it's just difficult to change. You have the time. This is how you're intended to spend your time. This is how God designed your time to be spent. We just have to get our lives in order. And we have the Holy Spirit. Those of you who are saved, the Holy Spirit is your comforter. He is your guide. He will lead you into all truths. He will lead you into all truths. So that means when you're about to blow your top over something that is super small, but it feels real huge to you, and that feeling is true and real for you in that moment, the Holy Spirit will be able to calm you down and show you the truth. All that brother said was, <laughs> he not hungry. <laughs> he don't know how much time you spent preparing that meal. Nor does he realize that a month ago you decided this is what was going to happen on such and such a day. He was hungry before he got home. So hungry he felt like he was about to faint. He didn't want to stop at McDonald's either. <laughs> but he did. He did not do that to disrespect you. He did not do that because he don't care. He did not do that, you know, whatever. He just said simply, I'm not hungry. He didn't give you any explanations. So maybe he should have. Maybe he said it with a stank face because he has a problem with that. Maybe he just really need to work that out regardless to this situation or not. Every time he says something, it's like, well, why did your face have to look like that, though? Like, do you, you know what, sometimes I just want to be like, because Pastor Carrick used to have a bad problem with this. <laughs> and it's so funny, I did too, but I did before we got married, and he did after. <laughs> and he told me before while we were dating, because I didn't notice it, he's like, love, you have like, for the most part, a stank face, he probably didn't say that, when people are talking to you, and then he's like, and sometimes you're like daydreaming, but you're like staring at a person. <laughs> and they are, feel very uncomfortable from across the room. Because friends had told him, and I was like, I didn't even know I was doing that. I was like, oh my gosh. And then he was giving me an example, and I remember, and I just remember that moment. I was like, I wasn't even thinking anything. I was just looking. <laughs> and I fixed it. But lo and behold, he had a secret issue himself. He was trying to take that little, that little thing out of my eye. He had this big old beam. <laughs> because when he gets home and the doors are closed, that's when his facial expressions come out. And they literally mean nothing. And he's fine, but he does not look like it. And sometimes I want to have a conversation. And I'm like, bam, do you see it too? Do you see it? <laughs> Because he never knows what I'm talking about. And I just want to be like taking pictures. I'm like, I'm going to pay paparazzi to just pop up one day. Because he doesn't, he's like, what? I didn't even do anything. And then I'm like, dude, you just rolled your eyes. And he's like, I just looked to the left. <laughs> I'm like. Well, bruh, when you look to the left, it's the same as rolling eyes to the rest of the world pretty sure when your eyes go like this. <laughs> he completely was unaware that that was truly what he was doing. Completely unaware. But he grew on purpose. Praise the Lord. But sometimes, you know, regardless to whether you, whomever you feel or whatever you feel the situation is that is keeping you from, first of all, you living your life. You living your best life now keeping you from doing what you call to do, whatever it is, you don't have to wait for that. You, not only do you not have to wait for that situation or that person to change, but you should not be waiting for that situation or that person to change. 
you change, you grow, and many times as a result of your changing, your situation will have to do something because it can't keep you bound. It can't hold you there. You know what? It takes two people to argue. I'm just going to, you know. And if you truly don't care, it's like, you know, well, you can argue with yourself by yourself, but I'm cool, we good. I mean, you know. And just pray for that person. There's a place that you can get to in the Lord where you are peaceful no matter what. In the midst of the storm, you are still peace. And it's not, it's not that you're being disrespectful. You don't love that person. You don't have to get to a place where it's like, I don't even care about you no more. You have hurt me so much, I'm going to grow despite you. You can act crazy, and I'm just going to be happy that you act crazy, but I'm not. You know, like where it's like truly and genuinely, I, I, I'm praying for you. I'm not bothered by you. I'm definitely not about to engage in this. The foolishness that I know can be in me is definitely not about to say hello to the foolishness that you are obviously allowing to fly freely in this moment. You don't have to um, be disrespectful. You can, in love, just let your light shine. You can just allow your family members, your coworkers, your environment, this world in general, to just see the change that God has done in you without being offensive, without letting your peace go, because you have to do that. You have to let it go. It can't be taken from you. Joy can't be taken from you. You have to choose to let that go. And you shouldn't because it's what makes you strong. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. And you know what? Even if you let it go, God is n- God is God, and He's so amazing. He can get you back to the place where you are full of the joy of the Lord. But then it is your job to keep it on purpose, understanding that everybody and everything is probably going to try to take it from you as soon as you walk out of whatever situation it was that you found yourself back in a good place. Like, if it's Sunday and you're at church, you're like, praise the Lord, that's exactly what I needed. As soon as you walk out, somebody's going to probably give you a call or not call you. Either way, there are going to be opportunities to let it go. But let's grow on purpose. Let's choose God's way. Let's choose joy. Let's choose peace. Let's choose to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us. If you are not quite at a place yet where you are being led by the Holy Spirit and, you know, you're like you have to grow to that point, be led by the word of God. Stand, we need to be doing, the, the, the Holy Spirit is always going to tell, like, the word of God and the Holy Spirit, it's never going to be different. But if you are like, you know, I'm not quite at that place where I feel like the, the leading of the Holy Spirit, you know, or I can't hear, I feel like I can't hear from God or I don't. I'm not, um, don't quite yet have the gift of speaking in other tongues, which you can get today. Um, Just be led by what you're reading. But you have to read in order to be led by. If you don't know what the Bible says, you're not even going to be able to, you're not going to be able to line your life up with what it's saying. And it's important to line your life up with what God is saying to get what God says is yours. It's very simple. And it's very important. And it's challenging. It's challenging in that you have to be disciplined. It's challenging in that you don't take days off from this. You ever notice when you take a day off? From almost anything. (laughs) It is such a struggle to get back if you get back. You be like, man, I'm going to eat sweets today. And then you're like a week deep into just like binging donuts. And it's like, what happened? (laughs) Just last week, I had not eaten it for a whole month. And then someone, you know, it's always somebody. Oh my gosh, I was that somebody for you guys, for for a few people this week. I'm sorry, Miss Petra. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Anywho, (laughs) forgive me, Father. Seriously, and Miss Petra. <laughs> Nonetheless, you know, I, mean, I hope you got back, though. I hope you, I hope that wasn't a, di- I hope I was not a stumbling block. <laughs> Nonetheless, um, it's hard sometimes. Like, you find yourself, like, 
it's hard to get back, but obviously you can. But it takes you being consistent and it takes you being disciplined. There's so much power in consistency because over time you don't have no choice but to grow. And I'm talking about being consistent in doing what the word says to do. Not what you think you should do. Nothing is going to change. You're going to keep getting what you have been getting. But when you're doing what God is telling you to do, when you're working the word, when you're standing on his promises, when you're choosing to grow today, no matter what today brings, one thing that helps me is just understanding that everything is hard. I really have to think about everything as being hard. Because then you get mad that it is hard. Like, I don't know why. I think it's because I, like, love Disney. But you know what's so funny? Disney fairy tales be, like, some stories be having some some hard situations. But for some reason, I'm not sure why. I just think everything should be, like, effortless. I had to renew my mind to the place. I had to renew my mind to the fact that everything takes work. I don't know if it's just our generation. I don't know if millennials just think, I don't know. But <laughs> I just, I have, I have to personally renew my mind to understand everything is not quick. Everything is not just given to you. Everything is not without effort. Everything takes work. Now, everything has been freely given to me because of what Christ has done for me. Everything that God has is yours because of what Jesus did for you. The type of work that I'm talking about is you doing what God is telling you to do. It takes work to do your part. It takes work to renew your mind. You know? It takes work to get up early in the morning and to pray. Y'all already know it takes work to love people. <laughs> it takes work to just be quiet at times. It takes work to walk away. It takes work to change. It takes work to admit that you are the one that is the problem. <laughs> you got to work on that like, oh, I can point the fingers at so many people. <laughs> and even if the reason why you are the way you are is because of others, right now you still the problem, and we need to work on you. Because we need to get you to a place where the Lord can see the fruition of all the seeds that he's planting in your life right now. Because it's something very important that you need to do. And there's always going to be something very important that you need to do. Our life has different seasons. But we are supposed to be going from glory to glory. This truth will absolutely never change. Let's read Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. So first we have to stop and allow ourselves to realize where we are, where, what is the condition of our heart if you don't know. And then we need to allow the Lord to work on that, to make sure that our heart is good ground. And then we need to sow seeds intentionally, and then the Lord is trying to do a good work. And so there's seeds that he needs to bring to fruition in your life. So let's read chapter, 20, chapter 8 of Genesis, verse 22. While the earth remaineth, I could probably, that, I mean, it's not changing. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. While the earth remaineth, there will always be seed time and harvest. If you are believing God for healing, Many times we see instantaneous healings in this church all the time. Many of us have experienced instantaneous healings in this church. Thank you. 
Raise your hand if you have experienced instantaneous healing or the Lord healing you on the spot. You guys turn around. I mean, you know, yeah, everybody look around so you can see. That's a lot of people. Please put your hands down. God is, God is the healer. He can heal you instantaneously. We see that all the time. He can heal you using medicine. He can heal you um, whether you are at church or not. You can just be at your house and you can receive your healing. God is the healer. But whatever the root was, if it was something that we did, we have to change that. Otherwise, we're going to find ourselves in the same situation. God will heal your body of X, Y, Z, but not to allow you to freely do what it was that got you in that position in the first place. If you had diabetes and you were healed from it, you have to now choose to walk in divine healing by changing your lifestyle, and the Holy Spirit will help you get to that place. Otherwise, you'll find yourself back in the same situation. So you have to sow seeds into your body. You, food is a seed. You give that time, and it's going to produce a harvest. So if you're super tired, but you know you're not eating right, sow different seeds. You'll reap a different harvest. If you are believing God, to do a miracle in your marriage. <laughs> if you're believing God for your husband or your wife to be, you know, a certain type of person, to be loving, to be whatever it is that you're believing God for them to be, and I know this is hard, but you need to sow seeds in your marriage intentionally before that person even changes. And you need to pray for them, and you need to figure out how to stay in peace for yourself in the meantime. I am not talking about abusive situations. That's something completely different. And if you are in that situation, please talk to one of our ministers after, staff, after church or, or schedule an appointment. I'm not talking about anything that is dangerous or violent. I just mean marriage. Like, living together is difficult. Even when you really like each other, you like each other so much that you're willing to do life together. It's hard. You're two different people with two di It's hard enough when you, it's hard for siblings who grew up with the same parents, <laughs> learning the same things to do life together, let alone two completely different people, men and women, different lives, I mean, different Maybe you grew up in different places with different families, different little things that get under your skin, and then you guys get to do life together, and you do get to do life together, but you have to grow intentionally. So you pray for that person. You pray for you too, shoot. <laughs> get, the, get wisdom for yourself on how to, to do this, how to do your part, how to be quiet when all you want to do is let him or her know how, you know, like, you know, whatever it is that you're wanting to them to know, which is probably not going to get you to where you want to be in your marriage. And then you have to choose to sow seeds of love and choose to sow seeds of unity. Choose to walk away. Um, I have seen God. There's times where, you know, Communication is so complex. Two people can be saying the same thing, and it can be heard drastically. I mean, a person, someone can say something, and the people, the hearers hear it drastically different. So it's going to take time. It's going to take you all choosing to grow on purpose for you all to get to a place where you're walking together in unity and where you are um, on one accord, that does not happen just because you said, I do. 
That happens because you sow seeds towards that happening. That happens because you are intentional about that happening. A lot of times people just get frustrated and they just stop trying. They may not in the marriage, but they're not even trying to walk together in union. They're not even trying. They're just trying not to argue. They're just trying not, sometimes not even to, you know, to talk. They're just like withdrawing. And I understand that. You've been hurt. It's been a lot. And it has been. But you have to allow the Lord to heal your heart and make sure that you are good. For real, for real. And then you have to trust him when he tells you to do these things because He's only telling you to do this so that you can get what it is that you're praying for. He's simply trying to bless you. But our part is hard. <laughs> our part sounds great on paper. Walk in love. Laugh a lot. <laughs> no, seriously, it sounds so simple. <laughs> and it sounds like so good. You really read really like you know, think thoughts that are true and lovely and kind. And you know, I mean, it just sounds perfect. But then in real life, we struggling. And then we mad that we're supposed to choose these thoughts because all I want to do is think, I ain't going to tell you what I want to think. But, you know, all you want to do is, it, you don't want that. Your flesh definitely does not want that. I am hurt, and I want to make sure you are hurt too. <laughs> you know? And that is the complete opposite of what the Lord tells us to do. And it's hard. And the only way to do it is by doing what God told us to do. <laughs> by renewing our mind daily, by praying, by going to church, by repenting, by starting again and choosing different. You know, repenting means to like, like you, you're supposed to like change what you're doing. You be like, oh, I'm going the wrong way. Let me, re let me get it right. Not just say, oh, I notice that I made a mistake, and then continue down the same path, knowing you're going to make the mistake again, and just keep saying, oh, sorry, that's not, that's not what it means to repent. It means to change. You're supposed to turn from that. You're supposed to do it differently. I repent, Lord. And, the G and, and God knows it's hard. He's going to help us. How many of us in here thought it was going to be so hard to change something you know, maybe when we gave our lives to Christ, or maybe just this morning, I'm not sure, but we thought it was going to be so hard to do it differently than we've always been doing it, or so hard to, to, to move away from whatever had been keeping us bound, but then we find ourselves free from it, we're not doing it anymore, it's not even a thing to us at all, it's just second nature to do what we thought was never going to be possible. How many of you can say that that has happened to you? Y'all look around, it's like, a lot of hands. I thought it was going to be so hard for me to love people the way that Jesus loved them. Um, I, thought it, I thought it was going to be cool for me to love me. I was like, I can do that part. <laughs> and for some people, that's a struggle. Loving others isn't, but loving yourself is. But I thought it was going to be super difficult for me to love others the way that Christ <laughs> loves um, them. Um, I just couldn't, I, I, as, a, as a teen, I, I just was like, you know, I love my mama, but outside of her, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know if I can truly say that I'll be able to keep this portion of, you know, I, can't, I don't know if I can say I can do what it is that you're asking me to do. But I asked the Lord, I asked the Holy Spirit, I was in the car one day, I was like, man, Jesus, I really want to do life the way that you're asking me to. But you keep asking me to do all these hard things. I really want to love people and not secretly cuss them all out in my head because people get on your nerves, Jesus. People are annoying, Lord. But I really want to. Please help my want to. I mean, actually, I don't even know if I wanted to. I wanted to do what he said, but I didn't want to, like, actually love people. So I'm like, Lord, please help my want to. I don't, I can't say I know what happened. I just know it was not long before I genuinely cared for these people that I did not know. I was genuinely praying for them. I wanted good for them. When they cursed me or whatever, I wanted to bless them because I realized the truth. 
They don't know who they are. But now I do. I know who God is. I know who I am. I know that you are important. I know that he loves you. And I love you because he, you're his. He, he, you ma- he made you. I love you too. I care about you, even if you don't care about you. Um, it was mind-blowing at the time that that happened because I didn't think that was going to happen. I thought that was the end of my Christian walk. I was like, oh, well, I tried it. <laughs> I did. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. So while the earth remain at seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. You have to choose life. You have to sow seeds according to the harvest you want to reap. Now let's go to Galatians chapter 6, and let's read verses 7 through 9. I'm going to read through the King, from the King James Version again. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not grow weary in well-doing. Be consistent. Don't Don't let yourself grow tired in doing it God's way. Don't grow weary in well-doing. For in due season you will reap if you faint not. Now I'm going to end shortly, but I'm going to share one more testimony with you all about our little girl, Elizabeth. First of all, she is so cute. Oh my gosh, I love her. So we've been believing God for kids, and I thought it was going to be easy for me. It ended up um, in 2015, we got pregnant twice, had miscarriages back to back, and I don't, I don't know if we were trying, but nonetheless, we ended up getting pregnant again in 2015, and this time the Lord had instructed me on what to do, to change a few things, and what to say, and I was, I, I was really busy before, and I didn't allow myself to become too busy at that point in time, so I was really intentional about each and every step of that pregnancy. The pregnancy ended up being perfect, the baby ended up being perfect, everything was great, and then we got pregnant again, 2018, 17, 2017, and our daughter was born July 2018, and three months after she was born, all of a sudden, she went to bed and woke up the next day, and she had like no hair, except for right here, she had a lot of hair, but it wasn't normal, it was like she just started, she just went bald, and then her skin was red, and and very, very irritated, Many doctors didn't really know what was going on with her, and so from month four until maybe two months ago, it just progressed rapidly and almost like violently. It was just her her flesh was just raw, and she was in pain, and she was stiff because she was so uncomfortable, and we were just trying to keep her from becoming infected by different things. And we had to, I had to sleep with her at night to keep her from scratching. I had to wrap my legs in between her legs and wrap my hands around her. I literally have been sleeping, I was sleeping so weird, which is why I had to go to my, to my friend, the masseuse yesterday. (laughs) We got to work some things out. But um, I had to sleep with her every night. And so pretty much I wasn't sleeping. I was sleeping, and every time she'd move, I would be aware, and I'd wake up, and I'd make sure she was okay. And she only wanted mommy because she was so uncomfortable. And only being with mommy um, really kind of made her feel com- – it didn't take away the pain, but it made her feel comforted. And so then we finally got an appointment after I called a lot. <laughs> I was like, hey, girl, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Y'all got no appointments available? I had to call and wait for their, an opening with a doctor, and I finally – got it, but it was for May, and this seemed like forever. <laughs> Back in 2018, I was just like, May, what's the day? Um, how many days? Is it? I'm so tired. <laughs> okay, May? Okay, that's better than, than nothing. Okay. And then I thought I had to push it back, so I called, and I was like, do I have anything available a couple of days? They were like, no, but we have the next one in October. I was like, no! May's fine. 
we're going to make it. Nonetheless, I had been praying and I had been trying everything, and then I had found something that worked. Um, no, not medicine or anything. Um, just, just in the, just something e easy and and natural, but um, took a lot for me to do. Now I get to work from home, so I was able to do all of these things, and I found myself. Um, actually, anyway, I found myself uh, finding. I don't want to say what it was, because just because it worked for her doesn't mean it'll work for him. It wasn't, it wasn't bad, but this just so happened to work for her. So I was uh, bathing her in apple cider vinegar, not not straight apple cider vinegar, but just water with just apple cider vinegar inside. And I would bathe her for minimum 20 minutes, and I'd do it for two times a day, and then I'd do a certain regimen. And I ended up changing my diet, which I realized affects her um, a lot, but then I didn't have to keep that. So nonetheless, it worked. And over the last two months, she is, she's better than she's ever been. Her skin, you can't even tell anything was ever wrong with her. But it's something that I realized that I had to do um, continuously, otherwise we'd go back. So we had our appointment this past Thursday, and she looked great. And I had to just tell them what our experience had been, because she looks great. And so the doctors tested her. We had had her blood tested and everything, and we had found out a few things, but the doctors texted her and was just like, she has, she's showing that she's allergic to um, peanut was one of them, and then I think egg was another. So they are, because of where she's at, they are putting her on a, she's a part of this program now, and she's going to do this this week program, I believe it's called, and she's going to do this peanut challenge next Friday, so pray for her. They're going to try to um, get her to the place where she no longer is allergic to peanuts or allergic to eggs. And so we have that next testing next week. So I'm going to ask you to pray for her because as, as of last week, she was showing to have an allergy, but because of re uh, new research and everything, we, it's not medicine. It's, it's, it's a very simple process, but I believe and the doctor believes that she doesn't even have to stay allergic. However, that's what has been happening, but this is what we've been doing. We are used to instantaneous healings. I did not know what was happening. The Lord told me she was going to be perfectly fine. However, it did not happen day one. It took from month four to month nine. I did see growth, but it was slower than I would like, and it took a lot of work on my part. It took me being very consistent. It took me saying things. It took me praying for crop failures when I didn't say the right things because I was so tired and so frustrated. It took me checking myself, checking my, my mouth um, in regards to not accepting she has anything. She's healed. She is, you know, she, um, she, she has flawless skin. She's not allergic to anything while at the same time doing what is necessary and wise in the natural. I, for the first time, I've never really had to wait this long for healing to manifest. But healing still manifested, even though it took more time than it normally does. And even though we are still walking this thing out, I mean, it's like, I would say it's probably like 90% difference from where we began. And that's before we even saw the doctor. The doc I thought the doctor, I didn't know what he was going to say. He was pretty much like, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she'll get to the place where we won't have to do that. So I could have, and then it took so much from me, and I know a lot of people didn't know what was going on. I really don't care that a lot of people didn't know what was going on. I just care that my child is fine, and I care that I was doing what I was supposed to do, and I needed to protect her, and I needed to do what was good for her, what was best for her. And so that took m a lot from me. But praise the Lord, I was able to do it. And Pastor Carrick is um, such an amazing dad. So he he um, he would speak the word over her, pray over her. He was so smooth. He's always so cool in these situations. Um, but he's always just like, you know, his faith concerning God and healing is just like, he's like, she's going to be fine. But I had to make sure that I was sowing seeds for the type of harvest that I wanted to reap. Even though it was really physically tiring. Even though I was so sad to see her when she was crying and in pain. But that's 
what you have to do, you have to be consistent. You have to check yourself. You have to make sure you're okay. I wouldn't have been able to continue this for too long without being okay. I had literally just given birth, and now we have to deal with something else that is requiring all of my time day and night. But you have to make sure you're okay. You have to allow the Lord to minister to you. You have to figure out how to do that in your home. Then you have to choose to be consistent. You have to choose to let it go when you make a mistake. And you have to just get right back in place and keep moving forward on purpose. When you choose to move forward on purpose, you'll find yourself living a lifestyle where you are experiencing continuous growth. You apply this to literally every area of your life. It doesn't matter what situation it is. This is what you need to do. You need to choose to grow on purpose. You need to choose to apply the word, and you need to choose to be consistent. So as you heard, choose and be intentional. And one of the things you have to understand about the life of faith just because you make a decision to be intentional today doesn't mean it's going to be easy tomorrow. No. Because it's not like the only faith project we had going on at one time is with our baby. Because at the same time, I know something hits your body and something hit my body, and then it's normal things. So if you're going to be a faith person, you have to learn how to fight. Yes. You can't back down. You keep going till you get your desired results. And this is how you fight. Like, joy is a part of your fight. Yeah. You keep pushing until you get what you want. You don't go, oh, it didn't happen in the first week. No, that's what babies do. Yeah. But if you're going to get the desired result, if you're going for your miracle, because not all miracles are instantaneous, it would be great if they all were. That would be wonderful. It would be amazing <laughs> if they all were. But I remember I was reading this quote from John G. Lake, and he said, sometimes our instantaneous healings are a disservice to us because we don't know how to use our faith. And so I'm thankful for it. There was so much growth that took place with me personally because of what happened with my daughter. I had not experienced anything like this before, but I grew exponentially as a result of having to work my faith for so long, so consistently. I did make mistakes, but again, just pray for crop failures, repent, and keep moving. I didn't stay in that vein when I got frustrated, was like, you know, maybe wanting someone to feel, not sorry for me, because I don't really talk to many people, if I was talking to my mom, and I'm like, oh, she's just got, she's allergic to everything and then I'm like you know what I repent like just get back on track but I grew so much and that's what you need because growth is requirement a prerequisite for this next step I needed to be able to fight like this on this level before I can go to the next level I mean I didn't need God did not give this to Elizabeth that's not what I'm saying he's not putting you in these situations so that you can get anything that's not what happened that was a lie of the enemy. God told me the truth. But I, in the midst of something bad that happened, had the opportunity. <laughs> had the opportunity. Can, is my mic on? I'm going to say this. Had I had the opportunity in the midst of something bad that was happening to grow, which is a good thing. God will work all things out for your good, no matter what situation is. God does not put the bad on us, but even when something bad is happening, he'll make it work for your good, and so much will come from it, because he'll, he'll, he'll give you a testimony from these trying and testing times every single time. Thanks for watching the Faith Broadcast today. We hope you enjoyed the message. We'd love to hear from you. So if you're watching us, you can follow us on social media. Our social media handles on Twitter and Instagram is at WeAreFaithATL. You can also go to our website at FCCJ.com. Follow us on social media. Follow us on our YouTube channel. Contact us online. We'd love to hear from you. Have a wonderful day.